So let me ask you this. Have you ever had really unuseful things said to you when you have told someone about what you've experienced from a narcissistic person? This video is all about things to not say to survivors of narcissists. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from all things related to narcissism. One, one thing that's said to a lot of people, especially when they leave romantic relationships and even more so when they weren't married to the person, okay? Just get over it. Just get over it. Just move on. Just get past it. How helpful is that? First, first of all, the person saying this clearly does not understand what trauma bonding is. I get that it, they're trying to help you. They're speaking perhaps from a place of caring about you and wanting you to move on, but they're also speaking from a place of not wanting to listen to you complain about what you're feeling over and over and over again. And guess what? We feel that. We know it because we can hear it in their tone. And it gets to feel kind of dismissive, doesn't it? When someone says, just get over it, just move on. I mean, what's the matter? Just forget it. They were terrible anyway. All right. So that is something that you just don't say to people. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help them to move on. All it does is creates a problem between you and the person that said it, because now you no longer feel supported or validated or understood or listened to. What would be more helpful is understanding and learning about things like trauma bonding, cognitive dissonance, and what it really is like for someone who has been through a toxic relationship or has toxic parents and is trying to separate from them. And through that understanding, recognizing that words like this don't actually help. So another very unuseful thing people say, and actually very devaluing things people might say to a survivor of narcissistic abuse is, yeah, that sounds like every man or woman out there, basically dismissing all of the stuff you're telling them when you're telling them about the manipulation and the toxic things they did. I cannot tell you how many videos I have made where I get comments like that. I quickly just remove the comment because it is not useful to the community and also think to myself, there really are people out there who think that way, probably toxic themselves, but really there are people who think that we are sitting around here complaining about narcissistic people for the fun of it. All right. They think we're doing it because we believe everyone is toxic. No, there really and truly are manipulative people out there who hurt others in relationships. And the understanding of that is very useful for people who have been through it. When we're describing the things that we've been through, when we're describing the manipulation, we're not complaining. What someone who has lived through it is trying to do is feel validation for the fact that this actually was as bad as it sounds. And know that when we're telling people this, we're only saying most likely like the tip of the iceberg. We are not giving the person the full extent of the traumatic experience that we just experienced because we can't even process it yet, right? You probably have even told therapists or coaches, I know when I speak to people, when I'm coaching them, Oftentimes they'll tell me the story in a very diminished way. And I know there's a heck of a lot more going on behind the scenes and what went on was way worse than what they're describing because I can hear it in the way they're describing it and I can see it in the way they're shut down from their own experience. So to say to someone, that sounds like every man or woman out there is incredibly dismissive. If someone's doing that to you, just walk away, all right? So are you feeling me here with these? Have you had anything said to you completely inappropriately? Let me know in the comments. So another thing that happens sometimes is people start making excuses for the narcissist in ways like, oh, I'm sure they didn't mean it the way it sounded, or, well, maybe they were just having a bad day, or maybe it's just really hard for them to express their emotions, or things like that where they are diminishing the fact that this is an actual manipulation technique and that gaslighting is real and that someone in your life did it on purpose, all right? That someone in your life either can't help themselves because they are so blind to the fact that they're narcissistic or is actually manipulating on purpose to avoid everything in the relationship that doesn't serve them in the immediate moment. So this is a personal, absolute, not favorite. It takes two to tango, you know? You know that every coin has two sides. You know that there are two people in the relationship here. On and on, you know, like that, where they are basically saying, I hear you, but I don't know them. So I don't know that it's true. 
Well, if you listen to enough of the story, you don't need to know that it's true. You can hear that someone has been through something. And even so, would you say that about other things in life? Would you say to someone that when they're like, would, would we even say the same thing back to them if they were telling a story of their life? No, we'd listen to their truth and we'd say, okay, wow, it sounds like you've been through a lot. Do you need help? Do you need some help looking for resources? You know, like it isn't something, it's nobody's place to tell somebody else that their experience of something is inaccurate. Anyway, don't do that if you're watching this and you have someone in your life who is talking about an emotionally manipulative or damaging experience they're having with another person. Okay. Sometimes people will say, if it were really so bad, you really wouldn't miss them. Please educate yourself on what cognitive dissonance is. Educate yourself on what trauma bonding is and you will understand this and never say it again. Because the more deeply manipulative a relationship is, and the more someone gets lost to that relationship, the more it's going to be true that no matter how bad that person treats them, they are going to have moments, if not most of their life, wishing it were different, wishing that that person could be different, wishing so much that it becomes hope. And then that hope becomes the only thing they can cling to for feeling safe and okay with themselves. So it is a way bigger topic than just, if they're so bad, you wouldn't miss them. Remember that telling someone that they are too sensitive is not necessarily a great answer either. When you tell someone that they are too sensitive, what you're saying is nothing that you've experienced is accurate. And it's your oversensitivity that made a mountain out of a molehill. When we are talking about narcissistic abuse, we are making molehills out of mountains, really. What we are doing when we are survivors of narcissistic abuse is trying to cope with the abuse, trying to cope with the manipulation, and diminishing its effect on us by trying to minimize how important the toxic things are in order for us to continue with the relationship because we have been told and taught it's us. All right. So no, people aren't exaggerating what's going on for them. And they are not too sensitive in their responses. And remember, if someone is using your innate and beautiful sensitivity, the thing that takes it from empathy into an experience, right? From, no, from being able to sense the world around you, the needs of others, the needs of yourself and, and how things interact if someone takes that and weaponizes it by saying you're too sensitive, you are allowed to place a boundary and say, I am just sensitive enough. And let's talk about this last point. When people say it's something to do with your behavior that created the problem, that you're the problem, that anything that is victim blaming of you, you're the one who has survived the emotional manipulation. Going back to my point earlier, many people looking on from the outside will see reactivity. They will see someone who has had repeated and systematic manipulation in their life and they will start seeing how they're like sort of hair trigger or they get reactive or, you know, they start having crying jags or temper tantrums or, or you know, fits of anger. And they will see that and say, oh, that person must be the problem. When I see that, I think, hmm, that person might be involved with a covert narcissist. Because yes, it is true that there are people who are not being reactive, they're just mean or they're just react or they're just reactionary in a hostile way toward others. But a lot of times when people are saying, no, I'm in a toxic relationship, please help. And they're reactive at the same time. They have been silenced. They have been shut down and they are having a fight flight response that is a fight response in order to keep themselves above water and to keep themselves from just drowning in the manipulation. So check out the next video to understand more about healing from narcissistic abuse.